tell. Interesting. That's, that's true, Jen. That's so true. Still calculating. <laughs> yeah, man. It'll refresh in just a second okay. there. So we are live. So real quick, why don't you intro uh, Jen Bethune of Your Hype Couple because you guys have such a good relationship. Tell us about Jen. Uh, Jen with Your Hype Couple. Uh, Jen, I love you. I'm so glad you're here and you're on the show. And uh, we've known each other for a few years. Well, a few, like five wow. years now. Dang. Um, before you started your travel like lifestyle journey. And so I think that's one of the things we bond about is like we knew each other before we really pursued our dreams and kind of jumped into this crazy world of of well you were an entrepreneur beforehand but but just the world mm. of travel and influencing i mean i feel like we've been kind of like hand in hand in, with that so um but jen bethune and kyle and the whole family now have your hype couple and they've just taken off so yeah so a few high level questions um for people who might not ha know your brand yet or know your your channels um how long have you been intentionally an influencing family uh, February will be four years. Actually, no, November. This past November is four years because we started the the channel and everything when we decided to to go live. So or go go live on the road. So yeah, years. man. Now, okay. So I lived abroad. I lived a temporarily nomadic life. You do this full time. Like, was there ever a milestone where you and you and Kyle looked at each other and were like, "We're out." Or like, this is tough. Like, did you ever have an existential moment on like the nomadic life? You know, this bus life was our Hail Mary. Our marriage was failing. <laughs> our life was failing. Everything was going wrong. Um, and we were like, you know what? Screw it. Let, let's go do this crazy journey. So like turning back was never an option for us. And uh, yeah, we found out we are we are nomads through and through with no end in sight of uh, no living it. Well, once yeah. you've gone, I think, once you've gone that many years, you're like, we could just keep going. But like, I lived in the Dominican Republic for a year and on month nine, I was like, I ain't doing this no more. Like I had to get back. And it wasn't the nomadism. That was probably an intercultural, like, I just wasn't, I, I wasn't, I didn't have the same opportunities. And yeah. I think that was, that was it for me, but uh, that's interesting. Okay. And so like a few other numbers that people should know, I saw that your Instagram has like almost 115,000 followers. Yeah, yeah. Give or take. Yeah. And then your YouTube channel, I'm looking right now, 271,000 followers. We have a were lot there, of friends, yeah. You do have a lot of friends. Were there moments where these numbers leapt and you could point to a specific thought or a Ooh. topic? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, there's there was a couple times where we had a lot of big jumps. Um, the first really major jump was back in the summer, end of summer of 2021, we found um, some footage that led to helping find a missing person. Um, okay. And so that was pretty cool. Got a lot of world national coverage from that. Okay. And then we went viral, mega viral in the summer of 2022. And we had about eight videos at the same time on all three platforms going crazy. Um, was it the content or the edits or like, like, what was it? For it was those? the trolls. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, it was about the kids, you know, right, yeah. we, our mission was to show people that an alternative lifestyle is doable and we wanted to show how we did it. So before we even filmed the kids, we one asked that or let them know what we're thinking of doing and okay. then take questions from them of what they think or their input. And then we ask them, is this something that you would want to film with us? And if they say yes, cool, let's go. We'll film. If they say nope, I don't really want to do it, then we say okay, cool. You don't have to. Uh, that's why Molly is in the majority of our videos as opposed to the boys because the boys just don't like it as much as she does. Ah, okay. Real quick, Scout Inquire says, "Hey everyone, uh, New York is sending big hugs to Jen and Kyle from the family." Jess Esquil says, "We love the hype couple." Love uh, you guys. Yep. Yeah, and just good morning. So just a few quick uh, comments there here. Yeah, let's just put them on the screen. Boom, there they are. Um, love the love there. So, okay, so we were just a, uh, oop, oh, okay. I have a question for you, and we sent you a few questions. Where are my questions? Let me pull these up because I'm super curious about, I've been curious, you know, um, Nicole's been on this journey with you guys and all of her clients like you for a long time. But um, we asked Adventures with Gabby Gabby on our last show this question, 
And I'm really impressed at her numbers. Her personality's fun. I don't know. Do you guys follow each other maybe? Yes, I, mean, I love her. Gabby's amazing. Yeah. 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 And so we asked her, does she consider herself a successful influencer? And she surprised us. What mm -hmm. does she say? She goes, no, I don't. <laughs> you never really feel, uh, for her, it was like a numbers thing and kind of staying relevant. So, um, but I know that there's different measurements for different people. So you could maybe feel successful about one thing, but maybe not another, you know? So I thought it was interesting to hear what you got to say. Yeah. Do you feel successful as an influence family? So success is perspective, right? Like everybody's perspective of success. This is my friend Trish back here. Um, hey, Trish. Everybody's <laughs> perspective of success is different. Um, and for me, that's not numbers. Although our, our, our numbers are high, numbers are not what does it for me. It's the people. If yeah. my content and what I do and how I speak about our life and being vulnerable, if mm -hmm. that helps one person today, I'm a success. So yeah. that for me, my mission in life is to give love and just show people that there truly is a light in this world. So if I do that, mm. I'm successful. Yeah. I, I mean, that's healthy. Do you yeah. think you've always felt that way? Did you ever chase numbers? Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody does. And I yeah. feel like if they tell you they don't, they're they're kind of misleading. And yeah. They're not because, being realistic with themselves. <laughs> yeah. When you see those viral videos come up, you're like, oh my gosh, people like me. This is amazing. Like for me, <laughs> I was bullied all throughout school. Like I was never popular. Um, I was never cool until I just became. Um, and so it's really cool to see people like you, but you can yeah. get caught up in it. And then there's burnout and, and, and it spirals from there. So I think yeah. at the end of the day, you got to know your purpose and why you're doing what you're doing. Definitely. And so, so my question, you, I've heard you say it and you mentioned this about her. There's like a pillar of content that's close to your heart about mental health. Mm -hmm. um, what is that? Tell, can, can I hear more about that? So really, absolutely. You know, it's all about your healing journey. And I think when you start your healing journey, you're able to discover who you want to be. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and your healing journey is really pulling back the trauma, pulling back the layers, pulling back the generational cycles that continue to affect you, um, and healing those. And once you heal them, you get to let them go and they don't affect you like they did before. And so you learn so much about yourself, um, when you start that healing journey, because mental yeah. health is absolutely incorporated in it. Yeah. Is that part of the reason you guys changed your your branding? Because that was a big deal. I mean, like you, everybody, yeah. you know, gets to know you as Red, White, and Bethune. But yeah. you felt I remember that calling that you came to, and you're like, "Look, we're considering changing our name. I know it's a big thing, but this is the next phase or move for us." And that was huge. Well, you know, we want to be inclusive. We want to love every single human being. I don't care if you hate me. I don't care if you like me. I just want to love you. Um, and so that was really the basis behind changing the name. Mm. We wanted a new start because our purpose, we zoned in. That first three and a half years we were doing YouTube and doing social media, that was learning. That was trial and mm -hmm. error. That was failing forward. Um, yeah. to get to now, to really define that heart driven purpose. Yeah. Yeah. A few quick comments that have been piping in. Jess uh, says, hello, Scout and Jess seem to know each other. A contact of mine says, Netza, uh, Netza Rodriguez says, healing is super important. Um, when did you hit a moment where you realized, wait, we need a time out and focus on healing? Um, without maybe getting into personal details, like where were you at in the country? Where were you at with your brand when you realized we got to work on some healing? There's been a lot. Um, oh. And when there <laughs> is, we pause. You know, when, when there's a moment that we are feeling very weighed down, very burnt out, just not ourselves. We're like, okay, hang on. We let all of our followers know, hey, we're not doing okay. We're taking a mental health break. And we'll take a mental health break for long as needed in order mm. to restore ourselves. Cause it's like putting that airplane mask on, right? Yep. If you don't put it on yourself first, you can't help the person next to you. And that mm. hurts our numbers. That hurts the algorithm. But at the end of the day, for us, our mental health is, is number one. 
Absolutely. Jess, Jess Esquel says it's important to keep your peace. For sure. Do you have code language between you and Kyle that's like a word that goes, listen, when I say this word, we got to have a talk in time out. Is there like, is there like a code word for the family? Yeah. I mean, there's a look, you know, (laughs) like many married people (laughs) We've been together for almost 18 years. We've done couples therapy for three years. We almost Mm. can communicate telepathically at this point. Um, You know, he can look at me and I'll be like, yeah, I I got you. And like, I can look at him and be like, oh yeah, yeah. I got you too, baby. So it's more of like an energy and a a Mm. being aware, being aware of your other person. Yeah, man. Jess says the hype couple provides a safe place. And so everyone uh, on here is loved and accepted. Boom. So you're, you're fulfilling your mission yep. in a oh, big yeah. way. Yep. Um, so quick question. You guys have traveled everywhere. Have you guys considered international? Oh, absolutely. Um, the thing that's stopping us right now uh, is our dogs. You know, we, we have four dogs mm. on the road and we love them dearly. And so the plan is when the last one crosses the rainbow bridge, all of us, all five of us are going to go down to one backpack each and we are going to travel the world. Oh man. What if you could have them happy somewhere like my yard for like a month? (laughs) I don't know. The kind of travel that we want to do. It's It's not more Florida yards. (laughs) Yeah. It's dedication. And like, we don't want to have any ties down yeah. Um, we just want to be free as birds and go show our kids the world. Yeah. yeah. How old are you? Can I ask how old your kids are? Yeah. Ben is 13. Molly okay. is 10 and Eli is eight. Man, they're, they're all about an age to appreciate this. Oh, for sure. For sure. Do like they're, they're them. seeing it now. Like they did traditional life before we had the house, we had the cars, they went Private to regular schools. school. Yeah. Um, they much prefer this life over that one. Interesting. Okay. What you got there? <clears throat> Go for it. Uh, Scout says, beautifully said, Jen, you definitely need to peel the onion of your life to become happier and healthier. And uh, Darren when W says, glad you are all better, Jen. And then Roberto saying, love this. Yeah. So. Roberto Barrero from Tampa. Boom. So we're, so here's the question. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about Columbia? Yeah. So we had, I don't mind, you can preface this or I can preface this. We had a killer conversation with, what was her name? Catalina. Yeah, Catalina. Who was um, uh, a member of the Pro Columbia team yesterday. So like this question about Columbia came up and I don't know if you know anything. We just discovered Pro Columbia is the tourism arm Mm -hmm. for the country of Columbia. Yeah. And we got to talking just randomly to have them on the show because we're, you know, we're talking to all these travel people. And they're like, we're looking at bringing influencers down. And we asked them, what was the question we asked them? Like what their main what, problem was? Yeah, and what did she say? One of their biggest challenges um, is having the reputation of not having like a place for safe travel. So they're really focusing on changing that, um, you know, changing that reputation through like pre- um, press uh, press well, trips. Me- right. Press and media trips. And they're looking at influencer marketing again. And so um, specifically, I would say families, because if you are comfortable enough traveling to another country with your kids, I feel like that is really like the thing that makes everybody else go, OK, well, if they if they feel comfortable with their kids, then I can come there. So mm-hmm. family, I would think, is a big is a big um, part of that. So just really thinking um, international travel you know, is Colombia one of those places that come to mind when you think of traveling? Or if not, you know, is it, is it something that you would consider if you felt like if you were more like knowledgeable about the places to go and, and where to stay? For sure. Like we are the type of people that will literally go almost anywhere. Um, as oh, long yeah. as it feels aligned with us, we will go. Uh, and no. that's part of knowing yourself, you know, mm-hmm. and I feel like families are great because if you can bring kids there, you can bring anybody there. Right. Um, yeah. And I think that that's awesome because I feel like here we're a little jaded in the sense that we really don't know a lot about other countries. We, this we is the thing. Yeah. That different is bad, but different just means different. And yeah. so you really don't see it until you go experience it yourself. And so yeah. absolutely, hands down. Is, yeah. is there... Is there any country like the, the reason we're bringing this up is because is the reputation thing. And we thought, well, that's pretty intuitive because, you know, Americans kind of have this thought that 
have had. They've watched too many movies. About Colombia <laughs> and the narco state. And I just got back about a month ago from a trip down there where I had a where I had a great time. And <clears throat> and and it was fantastic. But then that got me thinking, how many countries just have this subtle like mm-hmm. red flag to Americans. So are there any countries other than Colombia that you've thought of that you're like, maybe I'll bring the kids down. Well, oh, not here. Um, like, is there anything that has like a yellow flag for you like that? I mean, anywhere there's a war going on at the oh, time, yeah. it's probably yeah. like going to be a no go for us. Um, <laughs> but we one. like to, we like to really do our research and look into things and like mm. go beyond that surface level layer and beyond the myth that that's going right. on. So at the yeah. top of my head, I mean, other than places that, that are in war or feel not okay with us when we look into them, I mean, I see us pretty much going everywhere. Yeah, Interesting. I do too. Now, now, when I used to travel, anywhere I go, you know how sometimes people collect like shot glasses? Like I tend to collect like old and used books. I like visiting, especially other countries, I like visiting um, like temples of faith that are that are local to that area. I like to visit with locals in the local economy. Do you ever, like for you and the family, I know you've mainly traveled the U.S. Do you have like a punch list of these? Not for content purposes. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, coffee. Kyle is a huge coffee lover, and he said the best cup was in Seattle. And I always wanted to order the coffee that he loved. And I we, I never got around to like asking, but Columbia would be amazing because they have a huge coffee tourism like Ooh. thing going on there. We should put that in a press kit for them. They sh- because yeah. she because Catalina was telling us that there's they're putting different um, niche press kits, press proposals together, and one of them was for the coffee region. Yeah, and checking that out. Maybe we'll yeah. It's, look it's at that base. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle will so... fall over. He remembers yeah. places based on the coffee there. So like, <laughs> I believe one of, it. One of his absolute favorite coffee places is in Leadville, Colorado, the highest incorporated town in the okay. United States. I've been there. Really? So it's this yeah. cute little tiny shack that he went to. Anyway, the man the man loves freaking coffee. Yeah. I've oh. been to this coffee shop. There's a marathon. It's the highest altitude marathon in the United States. It happens in Leadville. There's a gorgeous alpine lake like minutes from that coffee yep. shop We've and it, it was it was actually uh, up to the myth. Like it was it was good coffee. That's so funny. <laughs> it's a big thing. It's almost like a foodie. You go where like the the known spots are for that best thing. Yeah. Um, Roberto says, facts, so many huge myths. There are bad parts everywhere. And we yeah. can definitely say that about the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, I, in the U.S., I can mention five cities that no one would go in, sundown, LOL, <laughs> trust me, 100%, even here in Tampa yes. or Lakeland or, yep. you know, any city, so, state has that. We camped in the middle of Chicago in a trucking parking lot, okay? For an oh, my gosh. Day. Had the best. <laughs> Flipping time. Everybody was so nice. We were not bothered. Of course, there's parts of Chicago that you don't want to go to, but that's right. part of yeah. being aware, doing your research, seeing what places, mm, if I got a bad feeling, I'm not going to go there. We went mm-hmm. to Detroit. Detroit was incredible. Kyle and I had such a beautiful date day there. Oh. So you just have to be aware of your surroundings and yeah. do your research on the area. Oh, right. yeah. And then I'm often surprised, too, something that might have a bad reputation. You show up and go, like, I did I did a few years in Haiti, and then I lived in the DR, as I said, and there's some areas where they're like, don't go there. And you're like, well, these people are actually really nice. And then there's other areas where, like, you got to check this out. I tell you, I travel with Semester at Sea. I've never told you this story. I travel with Semester at Sea 2005, and, you know, our first stop was uh, Hong Kong. I'm sorry, our first stop was South uh, South Korea, Japan, all these places. And then we were getting into places in Africa and India and all this stuff. I was mugged twice in Hawaii. Whoa. Twice in Hawaii. And it was just like, what? And then, of course, you show up in, like, China, and they're like, everyone's trying to help, you know? And yeah. it's like, man, it just messes with your brain. That you, It's never what, what you think, yeah. you know? Yeah. Jared says, Colombia and Guatemala have wonderful coffee when thinking about the Americas region. Jared's my good buddy from our other show, Not Crypto Bros. Um, and he's got his own show, More Than Blockchain, and he's paying attention. But he's in Bogota, Colombia himself. He lives there, right? Yeah, he lives there. Jared, we got to talk about this co- awesome meeting we had. Um, what's Mike Mark say? Oh, heart and beautiful spirit would stop some wars. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Who's Mark? Do you know this guy? Yes. Oh, so many people are on that um, are our yeah, friends. People. And yeah. there, there are people. And I call them family. Uh, so, yeah, yeah Mark, Mark's yeah. part of the family. 
that's got to be one of the better parts of having cultivated a large following. And I've noticed every time I mention it, you reframe it as friends. And I, I appreciate that about mm -hmm. you because it kind of dehumanizes them to say followers or, you know, following or whatever it is. But I really like no, the No, Jen almost knows everybody who interacts with their channel if they are interacting in a meaningful way, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, she sends me screenshots of like, look at this comment. I, I live my best life. To, if there's anything else that happens in this world, <laughs> this comment right here is why I keep going. And she sends them to me and people are very touched by her community. And she has a community. She yeah. has the, is it still the Bethunies? Yeah. Yeah. And okay. like all, when I get great comments, I have this folder on my phone. Um, when I'm having a bad day, I pull out these comments and I'll read them. Yes. And they just make me feel so good. So like pro tip, um, if you have like text messages from somebody or Facebook messages, Facebook comments, and you get a great one, save it. Put it in a separate album in your phone for your bad days so you can pull it out and help yourself. Yeah, so um, you just got a great message here. Netza Rodriguez says, we want to follow Jen. So uh, Nicole is typing out y'all's, oh, wait, it's not Koopal. It's uh, it's hard. To, I'm like, it's your hype couple across the board. Like yeah, your uh, hype YouTube, couple. TikTok, Instagram. It's your hype couple. I'm going to do it one more time and see if I can type. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Nat. So we just miss it. We love you, Jen. Jess says, man, you got a lot of love. You know, if we were lesser people, we'd start a cult. I mean, these people really love you, <laughs> but uh, it, it would not be pure at that point. <laughs> now, now, Jen, how do I pronounce this handle? Do you know these folks, the 20 keys? Yeah. Tammy to to Oki's bus life. They uh they Yoki. just built their bus. I don't know if Tammy, if you guys are in it yet or not. I haven't seen an update, but they uh were getting on the road too. Awesome. So okay, what's next for your hype couple? You guys have done a lot. What's the vision for what's next? Yeah, we want to live by example. Um mm. you don't have to in order to change your life, you don't mm. have to go move into a bus. Um, but you do have to live your passion and kind of discover what that is. So we kind of want to be the roadmap for that and get super mm. vulnerable. Like I'm talking real raw, like with Kyle editing the videos, it's going to be our day in and day out life. He wants to put a new vlog out every other day. Um, wow. we want to be there for people. We have so many family members that are alone and don't have anyone close to them locally. Um, maybe their spouse has died. So like, we just, we want to be your family and be there for you. So wherever mm -hmm. that's going to take us is I'm, I'm excited for. So real quick, my guy, Jarrett in Bogota, he asks, I was late to the show. What type of bus do you have? And could you, could you answer that for us? Yeah, it's actually kind of right back there outside of the lounge. Uh, it's a 1983 Eagle bus. So she's a five-speed standard uh, bus that Kyle Kyle chugs on down the road. And we bought a new bus recently. It's going to get redone. Another story for another day. You want to do another little tour real quick and oh, show? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my, so my are falling down. life of professional nomads. Go ahead. <laughs> Professionals. We're actually staying in the same spot for three months. So what? I got to have, yes, I got to have an outdoor area. Our youngest wanted to play soccer. Our daughter wanted to be with her friends and Kyle, my partner wanted to play pickleball every single day. So <laughs> our best life here. Um, oh, yeah. this, this is the lounge. Actually, I'll take you guys out here first. Yeah, please. Here's, here's the parlor. So the yeah. parlor has the hammocks and the chairs and, and all the fun stuff. There's the bus. Then there is the dining room. We have our dining room over here. And then right here is our lounge. And so this is going to have the couches, the coffee table, just like such a great Hang and on. the mosquito netting, which is absolutely <laughs> key. Uh, absolutely for Florida. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's uh, that's our little oasis here in Central Florida. Yeah, Jared says that sounds like a serious bus. I was thinking a sprinter. No, my man. They they no. Well, they have a sprinter. Too. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Where does that park? Well, we put it in storage. Um, okay. We're actually trying to sell it. We that was one of our cathartic experiences was being yeah. in a bus for a, or being in a 120 square feet van with three kids, two adults, and four dogs for 11 mm -hmm. weeks. Um, major wow. spiritual growth on that one. <laughs> that was That's when we started the counseling. <laughs> <laughs> it was close. It was close. 
Uh, but no, so we, we wanted a off grid vehicle so we could park the bus and like get really off grid. Yeah. Um, and that 11 weeks we were remodeling the kids bunks. So we had to spend time. Spend oh, time. yeah. Okay. So Jared has a follow up and he says, he swears it's his last. I know Jared, it won't be his last. Um, uh, what's the Wi-Fi situation? Starlink, Verizon, what do you do? So we have four routers in our bus. Dang. Um, yeah. What? So we have, that's what I have in my house. Yeah, you have to have all of them because some of them work in different areas. Yeah. So we have Starlink. We have the T-Mobile Home, which is my favorite out of all four. 35 bucks a month, um, unlimited internet access. Then we have an yeah. AT&T router and a Visible, which is Verizon router. So no matter where we go, we are we are covered. Interesting. Okay. And how long did it take you to learn those lessons? Like, I'm out here trying to do a live and it's not happening. We're still learning lessons. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's always something. Uh, we have it down to like a 90% accuracy rate now, which I'll yeah. say pretty, it's a passing grade. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, but it took us about two, two and a half years to really figure out the Wi Fi situation. And you know, the international is like an entire new ball game. I know. I, I'll you get know? there when I get there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. even open that 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 yeah. can of worms. Patsy uh, Castine says the hype couple are amazing. And and how do you know Patsy? What does she do? So Patsy is actually Patty Gill's mom. So um, oh, Gill's okay. on wheels. Yes, yeah. Patsy. Love her. She is amazing. She lives in Georgia. I swear one of these days we're going to just pull up in her driveway. Um, but no, <laughs> she's, she's wonderful. So what th what's interesting is on the nomadic life, I think you saying you're going to be in a place for three months, A, that when you say that and you list why, mm -hmm. it's suddenly like, oh, that that makes sense. There are no rules. Yeah. But I remember when I was attempting some of the more nomadic life, there was this loop in my brain in the early days that that means I'm always on the go and and I don't build community. Mm -hmm. So you've been very fortunate to build your family and community. Is that as fulfilling as what people project being a townie somewhere or being a local somewhere? It is, is it checking all of your community boxes the way you want it to? Well, here's the thing. We live seasonally. We live with the weather. And coming up, we have a new plan. Um, in the fall and winter, we're going to kind of stay more still. Um, and mm -hmm. so kind of, you know, in the winter, you regenerate yourself. You're yeah. slow. The, the weather is darker earlier. So mm -hmm. you're really regeneration. Um, and then in the spring and summer, we're going to travel like crazy. We're going to be moving every week to every two weeks because it's fun. It's summer travel. Kids are not doing school as heavily. Um, so we're mm -hmm. going to live with the weather. And we also live with our kids' needs. When they voice something to us, it's really about what's going to benefit the whole family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we just, we wanted to slow down. Like I said, Eli wants to play soccer. We want to make sure that our kids have their needs met yeah. on the road too. When it, okay, yeah, there's an RV community that many have voiced that that has been more profound in their life than their own communities and their own towns when they were in sticks and bricks. And yeah. I've heard this multiple times, like the RV community is 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 an amazing thing on its own and, and also more fulfilling than what they have found before. And I I'm going to assume that's probably the case for what you think too, Jen, but you tell me, like, what have you found with the RV community? Have you found your people? Oh, absolutely. Like we are. So here's the thing. We don't really label ourselves anywhere. We just meander through life. Um, and so we have bus life friends, van life friends, world traveling friends. We have RV friends and we hang out with all of them at different times. So yes. we're fulfilling a part of our soul that needs it. We're not hanging around the same people, but we're getting beautiful, different experiences with a multitude of different human beings. So it's cool. Yeah. So overall, do you feel connected, more connected to people than, than you did? Absolutely. Because okay. like when yeah. you first meet on the road, it's like speed dating. You don't want to do small <laughs> talk. You don't want to deal with like the subtleties and the pleasantries. You get down to like childhood traumas. You're like, okay, yes, this, you had this happen too. Great, we're we're friends now, right? Um, yes, because you have a limited amount of time. And the thing with me is, I am not an online or texting friend. I am not a long distance friend. I am an in person. I want to be in your energy, hanging out yes. with you. I will give you my all, um, because I just feel like I'm a much more in person person. So with this life, I get to be intentional with that. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I caught something else. You know, 
with the hurried life everyone's living today, the digital life, there's a major move in a lot of people that are like young Gen Xers or millennials and younger to go back to the land, homesteading. But you mentioned something. Part of all of that is to feel connected to nature, connected to our living. I never thought about the correlation that you just made of moving with the weather is another way to do that. And that is what nomadic tribes did. And though you're doing it your own way, it is. So I guess that that my brain thought that. So my question is, do you feel scratching that itch of being more connected to the way life was meant to be? Absolutely. Um, when you when you live with the moon, you know, you live with the cycle there the, every 28 days, the moon is changing. Right. And so the energies are changing. The, the world, is, the weather is changing. And so when you go with the flow, you don't have to swim against the current. And when you Whoa, don't have time to, out. Uh oh, she just time dropped it out. Like it's hot. <laughs> when, you, uh, when you go with the flow. You don't, you don't have, have to, to swim, swim against, against the current. The current. Yes. Okay. I'm okay. Keep going. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get yeah, that. No, out. no, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, it, yeah. it's just wow. when you flow with life, it's just easier. You know, you don't get upset at things. You just let things unfold and mm -hmm. it's not so hard on you. Now I can assume, I can make some assumptions about the business of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I can make some assumptions that you're building some stability as you observe, maybe speaking for your observation of nomadic living, RV living, bus living, is there, I'm always concerned, I had this concern in the Dominican Republic. Am I building a life in preparation for retirement? Am I building, um, am I feeling secure about the future? And I, even Jarrett and I were having this conversation a little bit. Do you find that nomadic living affects it either way? security about the future, feeling secure in, in what your future looks like, or is there, or do, is everyone just comfortable not knowing? Well, I think we live in the moment, right? Like we're, okay. we're secure as much as we have to be like we, for a certain period of time out. But here's the thing, 62% of Americans live to die of old age. That yes. means there's almost 40 something percent that's never going to get there. So yeah. you're spending so much time planning and prepping and, and worrying and anxiety about the future. You have no idea what the future is going to hold, you know, and, yeah. and we take problems. We actually call them lessons. So the lessons that come our way, we take it one lesson at a time and yeah. we grow through it instead of like trying to plan for 50 things that haven't happened yet. We mm -hmm. deal with what's happening right now. Mm, very good. Very good. And you always have your bus. Yeah. <laughs> I can do it in a day. Like, yeah, like <laughs> you can do whatever you want. You already have your little home and it's like, you but know, the, that kind of takes it off. The thing is, everything's for a season. Like you were in the Dominican Republic for a season. It doesn't yeah. have to be forever. Um, yeah. You know, like I struggled at the beginning of nomad life. We have to move all the time. We are full time nomads. We have got to go and see mm. and do I'm still a full-time nomad. Just right now, my season is for three months in this amazing central Florida spot. You know, mm -hmm. I'm fluid. I can flow. There's no current, you know, that I'm swimming yeah. again. Yeah, man. man. What? That's good. You're yeah. just dropping all the knowledge bombs today. <laughs> I try. I try. I'm asking in your glory today. Yeah, it's like, man, okay, I think it's time to go check out a bus is what is I what know, the but the end of it, when you hang out with them, seriously, you start thinking about like, maybe I should get an RV. Maybe yeah. I do need to change my life. I need to, but you know. It's not even moving in a bus. Go move to a different state. Go move yeah. five towns away. If you really want to disrupt or to mm. shake up your life, and, and have real true meaning, you got to get out of where you've always been. Yeah. Because if you stay where you've always been, you're never going to change. Nothing's going to grow. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen. So you've yeah. got to make a major move and a shift. And that could be if you want to go live on the side of a mountain and sew dog sweaters and sell them on Etsy. It doesn't matter. Right. Whatever speaks to your soul, go do that. Okay. So for people who may not be able to move or you know, what are some things that they can do in their everyday life to give them a little bit more of that like shift that you're, that you're talking about, like disruptor, because they know yeah. something needs to change, but they maybe don't have the ability at this moment in time. You know, what would you say to, to those people? 
Good shut question. your phone off for an hour a day. Put yeah. It on oh, hey, another one. <laughs> Sit with yourself for an hour a day, whether that be outside going on a walk. Do not listen to music. Listen to the sounds of nature. Ask mm -hmm. yourself serious questions or just be silent. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just be with you. That, that's that's mm -hmm. the first one that's so major to getting to know yourself is stop the distractions because the yeah. only opinion that matters is yours. Yeah. So stop right. asking everybody else's. It's huge. I, I'm, a, I'm a coach of sorts, and whatever banner I'm under, goal coaching, messaging coaching, it's all kind of the same because what I'm realizing is people are jumping from thing to thing, and part of that motivation is like to keep ahead as entrepreneurs, but the other part is there there's this boogeyman in the closet that if they're alone with their voice in their head, mm -hmm. they're going to discover something that is more painful than they can handle. But a few sessions like you're talking about, and we quickly find out it's not so terrifying in my head, but there are some serious things I got to look at. And um, it's cathartic. It, it really it really is. So, so that leads to a question. I don't, did you have a question there that I cut off? No, I was oh. just going to read um, oh, go, what go Jarrett said is that everyone I know who has lived in other places are better off and it's a privilege. But if you can do it, you should. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, so I was going to ask this question. What, if any, message does the hype couple have? Is there a message you have to the world that you're cultivating? Yeah. I mean, you know, we want to hype you up and help you grow through life. Um, we want to be there with you in your wins. We want to be there with you in your fails. We want to show you that happiness, true contentment is achievable for anyone. It, mm. it took us 10 years to do that. It, it took us 10 years to start out as weekend RVers and knew that this was the goal. But let me tell you, time is going to pass by either way. Ten mm. years from now, look back with a different perspective than the one that you're sitting in. So if you're unhappy, if you don't like where you're at, if you're miserable, you can change it. Mm. You absolutely can't. No excuses. Find wow. a way to make it happen or you'll make an excuse not to. Mm. And I see that on your profile, your Instagram profile, it says encouraging growth through our lessons in travel. Yep. And is that pretty much across the board? Like your YouTube oh, channel yeah. says the same thing? Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it it's like all about growth. And us, like we get super vulnerable. What you see is what you get. This person, me, that's talking to you right now is the same person you're going to get if you walk up to my campsite and strike up a conversation. Like I'm sure. just dead. Um, and I, I live my life to help and serve and, and love other people. Mm, mm -hmm. That's powerful. Well, as we're hitting the top of our time, any final questions before we kind of direct people on how to follow Jen and Kyle and um, the family? Where can we can follow you on every platform? Um, you can also, if you want to tell us a little bit about like your membership and what oh. the Bethunies gets, um, that's different than maybe that people don't see on social because they're part of that membership. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, so we're going through some transitions. We're going we're going through some changes and the Bethunies are actually going to be kind of moving into um, your hype squad. And it's it. going to be a group full of just uplifting affirmations, being there for each other, um, really digging in and having a, a happy place to go on social media where you can mm. just be yourself. Yeah. How long have you been nurturing the the hype squad, the soon to be hype squad? How long have you been nurturing that intentional community? So April was when we um, really made the shift into your hype couple because we really didn't have a direction. When we were red, white, and Bethune. Um, mm. We were just trying to figure out life and, and bring people along with us. And now that we know our purpose, we made that shift back then, and it just it feels so so good. And and I appreciate that. And, and I guess what I'm asking is, is whether it was Bethunies before or this, it's a it's a subscription, it's a paid community of yep. some kind. Yep. Um, you know, as I've thought about building community for Spark, my, which is my personal brand, or Hot Spark, our shared brand, you know, some of the advisors in our lives have spoken and said community management's way too hard. Um, how has community management been for you? Because you got to build these deep relationships. How has community management been for you? It's you know, there's ebbs and flows. Honestly, mm -hmm. it would have been easier if we would have just joined Patreon. 
Um, but we decided to build it onto our website. So we own it. We own our mm -hmm. community. Uh, nobody can take that from us. Mm -hmm. We can put what we want on there. Um, the logistically, it's been a lot harder. Uh, we don't have all of those tools that, that Patreon is able to, to afford. However, it's been very rewarding it being ours. Um, yeah. And so we've kind of taken our time with it. It's gone through a weird phase. Um, we've paused all of the memberships right now because we kind mm -hmm. of want to transfer over and dedicate our time in one lane and shift back over to that soon. Okay. No, that's good feedback. That's, I mean, and that's kind of in line. A lot of people say, you know, like they, they build it with one thesis and then they develop a new thought and it's like, dang, when you have a community, that's not like turning the bus or breaking down the Cabela's tent. I'm turning a ship behind me of people right. that um, they're, they're vested yeah. and we want to honor those relationships. And so I've heard pros and cons on community. So we haven't launched anything yet and, and I haven't with Spark. I did have a community for a while, but I just thought I'd ask. You mentioned it and, and it's something that's top of mind for a lot of influencers that are on the grow. I'm sure a lot of them are considering community development or subscriptions of some kind. Mm -hmm. And and that's a good, not I warning, but learning. I, I don't want people to feel like they have to do all the things. You know, the mm -hmm. things come when you're ready for them. And so, like, if community is in your goal, it's in your mindset that I want this one day, it's mm -hmm. okay that it's maybe a year or two off. That That's yeah. not a bad thing. Get mm -hmm. control of your foundation first, and then mm -hmm. you can branch out into other things when you're ready to onboard them. Awesome. Awesome. So, if you're watching, this has been phenomenal. This, this went a direction... <laughs> I didn't know, and I'm really blessed by it. I know she's been blessed by your Love relationship for a long time. Great. But uh, I was really blessed on how you guys handle this because you make – a lot of people make influence work um, not seem superficial but seem glittery, if that makes any sense. And you yeah. make it seem – Rose-colored glasses. Yeah. Yeah, you make yeah. it seem very human and – but but not like gritty. I mean, if it's rose-colored glasses, but joyful. Yeah. And yeah. and I really appreciate that. So thank you so much, Jen. Everyone, follow them at Your Hype Couple on any platform you can. Uh, now I'm a raging fan. So thank you so much for your time, Jen. Thanks for oh, coming on, Jen. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Have a great one. Okay, bye. bye. Man, that was awesome. Any immediate takeaways just for the audience before we hang up that really stuck with you? I think that she has just as much of a business mind as she does um, – a mission and she's very intentional about both. But if there's one person who truly cares about their community, it's Jen and Kyle. Yeah. They are truly vested in their community. And you can see that today by people showing up. Mm -hmm. And that happens all the time when I'm with her, when people see, meet, like see her for the first time and it's incredible. Yeah. So I just love and appreciate that she's in my life and her community as well. So everyone, thank you so much. Next week, we will not have a heart hot spark show live. We're going to take the break getting close to the holidays, but we'll be back the next week. Yes. And we'll, you'll see those announcements. So thanks so much, everyone, and have a great day. Take care.